and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you almighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped forward and heard my cry. And he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not, then said I, behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me 
to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O oh Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples as he watched Jesus walk by and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. His, he first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are son, Simon, son of John. You will be called Kepha, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Very good afternoon to all. Um, the uh, the readings, the first reading in the in the gospel, um, direct our attention to this idea of of being called. In religious terms or theological circles, we'll refer to that as vocation. Right, uh, it comes from the Latin word vocare to 
to call. Um, and uh, I always love this story of, uh, of Samuel sleeping there in the, in the temple of the Lord. Um, I can relate to that. Um, I'm not giving you permission to go to sleep during a homily, but um, <laughs> um, I, have, I too have felt sleepy. Um, and, uh, and Eli hears this voice, um, and it's the Lord speaking to him. And the Lord is calling so gently, right? Um, it's as though he's knocking at the door of his heart, asking permission, right? Here I am, Lord. You called me, but he doesn't know that it's the Lord. And he goes to Samuel, and, and Samuel finally figures it out and gives him the most appropriate response, right? When you hear the Lord calling again, well, first of all, he says, go back to sleep, right? Not like you have to uh, stay up. You, you have to keep vigil for this. Just do what you're doing. Um, and if you were called... Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I wish I had been able to respond that definitively when I felt the Lord's call in my life. To be honest, um, I, I first felt the, the beginnings of vocation in my life when I was a young child. We were asked to draw in the second grade what you want to be when you grow up, and you know there was all kinds of normal responses from other students, uh, quote unquote normal, right? I guess fireman, uh, policeman, uh, nurse, teacher, all of these different things. And I drew a, myself, as somebody in grade two can do, not very well, um, <laughs> uh, a picture of, of a priest, and. Uh, I grew up in a, in a Catholic family. We were in Mass every Sunday. When I was old enough, I became an altar server. Um, and we always had uh, very close friends who were priests, and they would come over to the house, and we would have them over for dinner, and, and it was always something I remember. Um, they're a good example. And I was captivated by the, the stories of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and, um, and I thought, for sure, I was going to be a priest. And then, of course, you know, I grew up, right? Uh, I, I entered high school, and um, life and peer pressure and hormones, you know, change everything, right? My priorities uh, radically shifted um, to what young people um, are, are into, right? Um, as a young man, I was... Uh, you know, my priorities probably shifted from priesthood and in my faith to girls, sports, and friends, right? Uh, in that order. And uh, I knew that being a priest was um, uh, that I had to um, uh, forego or forsake uh, family life, having my own wife and children and things like that, and that just didn't seem like it was, it was for me. And yet, through all of that, the Lord persisted, gently calling. And it wasn't until after I graduated university that uh, I really began to, to pray. I had reached a point in my life where I thought, like, I got everything the world is telling me is supposed to make me happy. And yet I felt this emptiness inside, this longing for the Lord, this longing for fulfillment. I couldn't put my finger on it in the beginning. Um, and years afterwards, looking back, I read this line of St. Augustine's. And he says, Lord, you have made our hearts, and our hearts are not at rest until they rest in thee. Each of us has this longing for something greater, for fulfillment. And we see these two disciples walking with John the Baptist. They're waiting for the Messiah. They have this longing as well for answers. And John sees Jesus. He knows Jesus. It's, he's, it's his cousin, right? 
but he knows who he truly is. And he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. To the Jewish listener, that would have been so clear. The Lamb offered in sacrifice, the Lamb offered, you know, throughout the Old Testament in sacrifice to God. Behold, the Lamb of God, he who will be offered for our sins, he who will be the sin offering for us. And the two disciples hear this, and they immediately go and follow Jesus. What are you looking for? Jesus asks them. He asks us that question too. What are you looking for? He knows the answer. He knows the deepest longing of every human heart. We may not know it. We may think, well, I know what my longing is heart. But our deepest longing is for union with him, to be with him forever. They bring to him uh, uh, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, does the most natural thing. He has found in Jesus, in the person of Jesus, the answer to his longings. The answer to everything, the culmination of every question posed in the Old Testament, every promise made by the disciples or by the, by the prophets. And Jesus sees Simon, and I can't help but think in this moment, in my imagination anyway, Jesus says to him, you are Simon, son of John. He knows him, and you will be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. Okay, fine. Reading this in English, you know, okay, we know the guy's name is going to be Peter. In Spanish, his name is Pedro, which is a lot closer to piedra, which is stone. Kephas means rock. And Andrew is his brother, and his other friends are around him, and Jesus says, you are Simon, son of John, and you will be called rock. It's as though, as if I showed up, and Jesus said to me, and you will be called skinny. Right? Everybody knows Simon Peter, and, and, and if we know him from the New Testament, he's hardly a rock, right? He's vacillating from one thing to the next. You are, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Simon Peter, it is not flesh and blood who has revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. We know the rest. And then immediately afterwards, I, will, I must go to Jerusalem and be crucified. And Simon Peter's like, whoa, that's not going to happen. Slow your roll, calm down. And Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. From A plus to epic fail, right? This is the story of Simon Peter. You will be called Kephas. And I'm wondering in that moment if his brother and his friends are stifling a laugh behind, like, what? <laughs> no. But he becomes the rock. Jesus is, of course, our true and sure foundation, the only one in whom we can truly and confidently place our hope and our trust. But he calls Simon Peter to be his disciple and to be the foundation of his church. Each of us received that call from Jesus. It's not just for the apostles, not just for the nuns and the priests. Each of us receives that call from Jesus to holiness. Through our baptism, each of us is called to a life of union with God. This is what holiness means. We might think it means running around doing lots of little pious activities. No, it means union with God. Seeking union with Him and His church, which means each other, even people we disagree with. Jesus asks that question to us today. What are you looking for? Perhaps we should pause, look into our hearts, 
and ask ourselves that same question or hear that question from Jesus. What are you looking for? Amen. We stand now and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and trust in God, our loving Father, we present to him now our needs and petitions. For our Holy Father Francis, and Archbishop John, and all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the statesmen that guide nations. We, for their future, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus and the civil unrest in our cities and towns, we pray to the Lord. For an end to abortion, euthanasia, terrorism, and all acts that harm the dignity of the human person, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially from the young people of our parish and our families, we pray to the Lord. And for those on our parish prayer list, that God's healing touch may bring them peace and comfort, especially Luis Rodriguez, Mike Margic, Julia Greener, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the re recently deceased, that they may find a share in the gift and promise of eternal life, especially Dr. Floyd Pacheco Jr., Julian Valencia, Deacon Diego Herrera and his wife Edith, Mr. Luca Nywin Cohn Tone, and Teresa Burnaby, Ophelia Romero, and George Coleman, and Esmiel Candelaria, and Paul J. Sutton. For their souls we pray to the Lord. The intentions for which this Holy Mass is being offered is for birthday blessings upon Pete D., and for the health and well-being of Lawrence V. Hebel, and for the repose of the soul of Robert and souls of M Robert and Mildred Rimshik. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we place these intentions before you and those which remain in the silence of our heart, in confidence and trust in your loving providence, and we present them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a couple of announcements. The parish office will be closed on Monday the 18th in observance of Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s uh, day. Mass will be at 9 a.m. with confessions at 8.15, so there will be no 5.30 p.m. evening Mass or adoration that evening. There will also be no life teen this weekend, but teens, please join us next week as we kick off our new series called Bad Religion. That will reveal Christianity as, per, as personal faith and religious tradition that inspires authentic discipleship of Jesus and evangelization. Finally, we welcome back uh, Lawrence Goddard, our liturgist, who's been out for a month. He had COVID, 
and uh, thank you. Finally, we have an organ being played at Mass. And Father, uh, just um, to fill you in, Father Ortiz had COVID and he survived and uh, took a, a long uh, rest of vacation after uh, he recuperated from COVID. He'll be back saying Mass on Monday morning. So for those who come to weekend Mass, we will have Father Ortiz next week. So we, we must thank the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal for filling in uh, for these for almost a month and for Father Carney and for Father Dino Candelaria. Thank you. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace by a wave. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O 
Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God.